It's Trip again. Hope you're having a very good week, and I invite you to leave comments down there under the video. Today's video is about what I consider for target date funds to be the the simplest, best defaultment for millennial investors. For those of you saving for retirement, I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not making any money from this. I just felt led to make this video for you. If you don't know what to do with your money, or if you need some time to figure it all out, the best thing I think anybody can, a young person can do is to is to just pick a target date fund. And it's becoming much more popular with you millennials too. I have a few notes here that I've that I've that I need to follow to get through this. The target date funds are also known as life cycle funds. And they're they're actually mutual funds which are a target date fund is a mutual fund which is made up of other mutual funds. So you have the main target date fund up here, and then that target date fund has, has holdings consisting of, of other mutual funds, or ETFs, usually, since ETFs tend to have very low expense rates. And they start off in the target date fund, when you buy it, if you're, say, in your 20s, it has a higher allocation of stocks than it does of bonds or cash. And it sets itself on what they call a glide path so that the amount of stocks decreases as you get into your 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and beyond, because you can take more risk when you're younger than when you're older. So the proportion of you start off with a very low proportion of, of cash and bonds because these are the, are the least risky investments and those tend to increase as you get older, your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and, and beyonds. So they start off, the target day fund for your particular age starts off at a, a very... A, a, with a, with a relatively aggressive risk factor and it becomes more conservative over time. When the target date is actually reached, that is, that is when you'll be mostly invested in bonds and cash and fewer stocks. But most of the so-called experts so you should always have a proportion of stocks in your portfolio at any age because that's where most of the growth has tended to come from in the past. The target date funds are, are one-time decision funds. You buy, the, you buy the target date fund and then you're basically set. You don't have to do anything else because as time goes on, the, the target date fund will morph into a different kind of fund with a different holding of, of stocks and bonds and cash. So what are the pros and the cons of this type of fund? First of all, number one is their low maintenance. Millennials, like all young, all young people, are, are busy with their lives and maybe families. They have their their children, maybe their, their husbands or their wives are working too. So you'll have a lot of time to spend on investing and becoming an expert on all of this. You need to keep it simple and the target date funds do the rebalancing for you. So each year that goes by, the, the proportion of the stocks decreases gradually and the cash and the bonds increases gradually. And the average investor may simply not be, may not be knowledgeable enough or have the desire or the time to, to make these adjustments on their own. The target date funds are basically set it and forget it. 
The second big advantage of target date funds is the low minimum investment. If you were trying to if you were trying to buy funds to match all the different asset classes, it might take a few hundred dollars or even a thousand, two thousand dollars to replicate each of those funds. But with a target date fund, you just have one minimum investment amount to make. And that takes care of all the problem of having a buying and managing these individual funds. The third major advantage of the target date funds is low fees. Now when target date funds first came into being, they did have some egregious fees in them. They were a lot of them were, were pretty high because they had not only the the individual fees of the of the funds that the target date fund invested in, but on top of that you had a fee for the target date fund, a management fee that they would charge. But they've done a lot a lot better now these target date funds have a lot better at keeping the fees very low. And some of these fees are, are just minuscule, and very low, like even 0.2 or 0.3 tenths of a percent. And also, if you if you try to invest in, say, you have five or six funds individually, as I said before, you have the the problem of the of having the expertise or the time to make these adjustments. And it leads into the next big advantage. These funds are an easy way to diversify, and I've already touched on that. I hope I'm not over over talking some of these points. But I know to a lot of you this is kind of this is something new that you don't really have a knowledge a lot of knowledge about. The target date fund invests in all these other mutual funds, and target date funds will commonly hold a variety of these investments of different asset classes. The reason for have different to have different asset classes is so they don't all move at the same in the same way during any market cycle. Now, when we had the the Great Recession of two thousand seven to two thousand nine or ten. It seemed that everything fell all at once, so there's nothing perfect. But generally, over many times in history, foreign stocks have moved separately than U.S. than domestic stocks. So if the if the U.S. stock market was going down, then there could there was safety to be found in in foreign stocks. And the same with large cap stocks, that is, large company stocks. They, they might be falling at the same time that small cap stocks, smaller companies, that their, their stocks are rising. So you should have different asset classes. These, these target date funds will own like large companies, small companies, mid cap companies, that is average medium sized companies, cash, different kinds of cash, treasuries, bonds, bonds for instance, treasury bonds, corporate bonds, those are the bonds of companies, uh, junk bonds which are low rated bonds which which generally pay much higher interest than, than safer bonds. You hold a lot of these kinds of different investments and even some of these target date funds will hold alternative investments like what they call REITs, R-E-I-T, Real Estate Investment Trusts. So you have a, a real estate component there too. Okay, the last big uh, disadvantage of, or rather advantage of, uh, of these funds, I've already covered that too, is the asset allocation adjustments, the rebalancing. And as I said, that's where the, the target fund will make all the, will make the adjustments for you among these 
this funds that the target date funds own, fund owns, it will decide based on whatever fund, target date fund you're in, say like you're in one that's a, for, for 20, 30 year olds, it will reduce the amount of stocks over time by rebalancing among the, the funds that it owns and it will gradually increase the amount of bonds as you as you age, bonds and cash. Maybe I didn't cover this well enough, but you see each of these ETFs, or these funds that the that the target date fund owns, one of those ETFs might would be just for for stocks. One would be for bonds. One would be for well, international foreign stocks. You might have separate ETFs for large, medium, and small and small cap stocks, and then the REIT, the REIT, the real estate stocks. So the target date fund takes all that work out of you having to sit down with each of these individual ETFs and rebalance. Now anybody can learn to do this. It's not rocket science, as they say, but you may not feel comfortable doing that, especially when you're just starting out. So a target date fund does all of this for you. But nothing is perfect, so there are also disadvantages. I'll go over some of those now, the, the main ones. One disadvantage is that you're living longer. Of course, that's good for you individually if you're living longer and you're in good health. But you see, these the target date funds, depending on the company, that owns the fund, whether it's Vanguard, Fidelity, or whoever, their target date funds will vary from one company to another. So one target date fund might have might have you ending up with maybe twenty or thirty percent of your of your assets in stocks when you get older, and a different company might have you ending up with forty or fifty percent when you get older. Well. If people are going to live, if, if you all insist upon living longer, then you need to probably consider a target date fund that has a higher percentage of stocks at the beginning and even a relatively high percentage of stocks at the end as opposed to bonds and cash. Another disadvantage of target date funds is the glide path, the difference between between different funds, and I kind of already talked about some of that. The more stocks that you have, the more risk you're going to have. That's just that just kind of goes along with it, naturally. So, when the, as I said, when when you start out with some of these target date funds, they might have a they will have a higher percentage of stocks than, than other funds from another company will have. And really, this should have been, when I was making these notes, the first, the first disadvantage about the living longer and the glide path could have been the same, the same point. So I won't even, I won't even waste my time with that. I've covered it ad nauseum, I guess. And tax efficiency. If you buy a target date fund or any kind of mutual fund outside of a qualified plan, that's what they call retirement plans, if you buy it outside of a, of a like an IRA, a 401k, or a 403b, that is, if you hold it in a regular taxable account, then you're going to have higher taxes than you would in the in the tax deferred a tax deferred account like a 401k or a tax free account like a Roth like a Roth IRA is. You're gonna when the fund buys and sells companies, it's gonna trigger capital gains. That is the increase in value of of those individual companies. And worse yet, the, the bonds and the cash will throw off investments too, will throw off 
were thrown off, not investments, they were thrown off interest, which would be taxed at a higher rate than capital gains. And being taxed on, being taxed on current income that way is just a killer. So it depends on where you hold these funds as to how, as to how much taxes you will pay and it's better to hold them in a tax-advantaged account, whether it's tax-free like a Roth, or whether it's tax-deferred like a, like a 401k. So when you get down to it, the, the bottom line of all of what I've talked about is that a target date fund is a, is a very good default no-brainer investment for you. Consider everything else too, but when you're just starting out, a target day fund might be the th way to go as you have if, as you have so many obligations to your to your work life and your family and just having a life a apart from trying to read a lot of investment books and figure all this out. You have time to do that later if you want to. But there's nothing wrong with just keeping the target date fund for the rest of your life. And there are a lot of different companies that offer these funds. You have to look at, you need to do your research and, and pick some good ones, but some of the better ones, I think, and I'll give you some names as a place to start, although I'm not necessarily recommending any of these. Some of those companies in the past that have had pretty good target date funds that I've read about are Vanguard, Fidelity, TIAACREF, Dimensional, BlackRock, and J.P. Morgan. So I hope these are some things that you'll consider and, and that will help you. I thought about doing more of these personal finance type videos as opposed to reading poetry or eating or reviewing foods. I would like to be able to help people if, as I can, especially young people. But I'll just see what kind of response that I get because these things are kind of difficult to put together much more than those other kinds of, of ASMR type videos. But I, I guess this about does it and Please feel free to leave comments down below. Recognize that there are many different things you can invest in. I'm just trying to give you a, a default investment when you're starting out. But there's no reason you can't keep this, these target date funds for your entire life. And unless there's some huge calamity, unless a, a meteor destroys the earth or people get into power who want to spend all your money and ratchet up the debt even more, or unless there's a nuclear war, then I think target date funds would be something good to consider. It's a trip, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.